This is Explosion Network's Fast and Furious podcast, and we don't have friends. We have family. Each week in the lead up to Fast and Furious 9, we should be cracking a corona to discuss the films, characters, music, and more of the Fast Saga. My name's Dylan Blunt. Joining me today, Kira Munch. You thought this was going to be an Explosion Network podcast where Dylan didn't fuck up the introduction on the first time? Wow, why is this a joke? I don't understand. <laughs> also here, Ashley Hobley. Hey, excited to be here because life is binary, zeros and ones. Only two things keep a group like this together, fear or loyalty. And I don't see a drop of fear amongst you guys. <laughs> Except uh, the fear of you screwing up the intro every week. <laughs> Fucking hell! Yes! The intro is quite long. I should be allowed to fear something. <laughs> you know? What are you over here? You're like, dude, what, what do you want to watch every fortnight? Hey, what everyone, do you, what do you want to, to watch? And you fuck that up still. <laughs> do I know? Well, well, what do you want to, want to, want to watch? <laughs> There's a lot of W's. Yeah, there is a lot of W's. You're taking the L on this one, chum. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what a show. Uh, so this week we are talking about, of course, Furious 7. It was released in 2015. Directed by James Wan. This is important because it's the first one for a while without Justin Lin. This is the this is the, the first one without Justin Lin since the the franchise got revitalized. Uh, still written by Chris Morgan. Main cast: Vin Diesel, Paul Walker, Dwayne Johnson, Jason Statham, Michelle Rodriguez, Jordana Brewster, Tyrese Gibson, Chris Ludicrous Bridges, Kurt Russell, Nathaniel Emmanuel. Is that how you say her last name right? Yeah, like from Game of Thrones time. I should remember, but I don't yeah, for some reason. Uh, yeah. Elsa Pataki. Uh, Tony Jaa, Juan Hinosu, I can never say his name wrong, I'm so sorry. Right, I mean, I'm so sorry. Hinosu, Lucas Black, and Ronda Rousey. The synopsis for the film is Deckard Shaw seeks revenge against Dominic Toretto and his family for his comatose brother. Dominic Toretto, you don't know me. You're about to. Looks like the sons of London have followed us home. Remember Owen Shaw? This is Big Bad Brother. We'll be in hunting. One last ride. So this film, of course, I feel like is the most... It's it's the most important, I guess, in a lot of ways. There's a whole franchise. Like, it's, it is it is the point, you know? It is the, the, the defining point for this franchise. And it's definitely the most... I think successful of all the films. I believe this one's made the most money. Like it made a shit ton of money when it came out. So So, with um, what it means to pop culture and fans of this franchise, even if you weren't a fan of this franchise, you wanted to watch how they did this movie and how they um, finished Mm -hmm. it off. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people possibly came on board with this one and went back and caught up and sort of thing. So yeah. Um, Kieran, what are your overall thoughts on Furious Um, 7? I really hate watching this movie <laughs> because, and it's something that I always like, I put this off until probably the very last moment to watch this with this show because and even watching it, I got most of the way through. I was like, oh, this hasn't been so bad. I thought blah, blah, blah. It gets to that last scene on the beach and I start ugly crying every single time. <laughs> like really goddamn badly, like total like tears and just like it just hits me like a brick wall because I think I mentally blank out that they have the um the like video montage of like all the way through his life and everything and his scenes in Fast and Furious and everything and just yeah. having those moments and and just to like even. Even though it's nothing, it's actually nothing to do with the character, really. It's more Vin Diesel taking his opportunity to say goodbye to his friend in this movie. Yeah. And even though you're like, it, it kind of, you know, it's building to it, but at the same time, they don't really mention that Brian's going to leave until the very end of the movie. And then, and then it's just this really, it's almost like a eulogy. It's this heartfelt like goodbye from Vin Diesel, and you just start ugly crying i just i just can't help myself i can't stop it's so yeah. like and i think it's also part of the reason i've never watched eight is just because of how hard the end of this movie hits me and even though and how hard like like paul walker's passing hits as you know 
it's probably the first actor in my life, other than maybe no, even even more than Heath Ledger, which is a crazy thing to say with the caliber of actor Heath Ledger was. This is the actor in my life that probably hit me the hardest with their passing. Because it was an actor that had been around throughout my childhood in movies that I had connected with in my younger teenage years that had that it was just a very shocking thing. And then to see it done in this way was amazing. Yes, the rest of the narrative of this movie is clunky as fuck. But as a whole, like just that ending means this movie is like just priceless to me in my heart. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just jump in here and say basically everything you just said, I agree, like feel the, the exact same way. Um, I've watched this movie a lot and every single time I, I go <laughs> crying at the the end. Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll get to a point here where I start fucking crying in this thing if we start <laughs> talking about certain things because exactly the same to you. I feel like um, I can definitely say without a doubt, like there's been some of the celebrity deaths where I'm like, oh, that made me like sad or, you know, something like like that but I, I can definitely say without a doubt that paul walker's death was i would say the one that has hit me the most full stop throughout my life so far like celebrity death because it is it, he's the only actor that i watched all of his movies growing up everything they were a lot of them were terrible but i don't give a fuck like he's you know because he, he jumped in, he did a lot of different franchises he was trying out horror movies and whatever else he did into the blue of jessica Alba. i was like i'm a fucking high school I'm like oh fucking jessica Alba. <laughs> you know like paul walker's <laughs> in this i'm watching this damn movie um and then of course the fast fast and furious movies like one of my favorite franchises of all time so yeah it's like when i can i can definitely say that his death is the one that's hit me the most full stop um and it makes the movie hard to watch but at the same time um it makes it special and also i everything you just said i i agree i I think that's the reason the last scene works is because it's like the movie ends it kind of fades to black sort of and then they come at the the beach and the the beach scene isn't even really the movie anymore it's like just it is out of character vin diesel just doing this eulogy saying goodbye to like even just the moment where tej tells roman to shut up and just watch yeah. is so heartbreaking where you're just like, this is their moment of not just saying goodbye to the characters as characters, but this is their moment of saying goodbye to to Paul in such a public way. It's so, it's just so, yeah, it's heartbreaking to watch. And especially with that music playing underneath it, like even just the moment that that piano piece starts playing underneath everything, you're like, Fuck, here we go. Oh, okay. Here, 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 this is why I don't like watching this movie. <laughs> here, here we fucking go again. Here we go again. Here come the waterworks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Every time. Uh, I'll say for the rest of the movie, I, I, I enjoy the rest of it. I think the, the first like half an hour is clunky because it does a lot of like got to do this and show you this to get this to get this person over here they've killed han blah 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 now Stephen's over here blah 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 oh and now like we're we're kind of into the main movie and stuff's happening and they're gonna chase people but i feel like the first half is a lot of like scene 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 and then you kind of get into the uh the throw of things and i don't mind jason statham um what's the fuck is his first name Dickard. Dickard, sure. sure. Deckard. Is it oh, Deckard Shaw? Right, yeah. Deckard. I, I think Deckard Shaw, uh, Jason Statham, is a great villain. Like he's fun to watch in this, uh, which is why I have <laughs> when we get to the sequel. I think he of just them. he could have yeah. he, he was good enough to be a villain by himself. They just didn't write this narrative to make him the sole villain. Which yeah, I they, guess they made. I guess th- they needed other people because it's like. I don't know. It, it kind of works. You need a third party somewhat, I think, mm. to make it work. I mean, he kind of plays like uh, that Resident Evil character, Mr. X or whatever. Like, he just pops up yeah. in the most inopportune <laughs> time so. and, like, it fucks up your shit whenever you're trying and to then, do something. And then towards the end of the movie, you can see the point where the director kind of shrugs and then, like, somehow wonkily connects the two bad group guys together. And you're like, okay, sure. I mean, this, this, this whole movie was a struggle. I mean, they had to yeah. fit the... You know, when he died, they 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 sat down and it's like, what do you do? Cancel it? Rewrite the script? Like, what? Where? How do yep. we go about this? So you, I mean, uh, you don't. We, we still don't know really how much that affected potential things. Like, we could have had other scenes with Paul that they couldn't sim- they couldn't work because they were too action heavy or something, and they were would have been too hard to do CGI wise. I, I we I really don't know like how it the original looked or something like that. But yeah. Um. But overall, I think the movie is is really good. I think it gets extra points because of the 
end scene and like how it treats that, I think I'm just willing to say I would I bump up the score at least one whole point for the emotional impact that has. But uh, even then, I, I still don't think it's a bad action film. Um, and I think Deckard Shaw's a great villain and whatever else. Ash, how do you feel about this movie? Yeah, obviously, I, I it, like you guys said, that ending is like makes you a blubbering mess kind of <laughs> it, it i think it's in the pantheon of like films that make guys cry like broody and that kind of stuff like <laughs> <laughs> you know? what do you mean i cry in all movies what do you, what's I this cry way more than i'd like to admit <laughs> we'll talk about it later uh but yeah I, I i i think they give brian a good story through the whole the arc through the start from like adjusting to domestic life and then you know, going back one last time um, and I yeah. think it works out like having him retire. Like, yeah, at the again, end, like, I wonder story-wise. in an alternate universe where Paul Walker doesn't die, what this movie looks like. Yeah, uh, yeah. Do, yeah. It, does he it still does... get written out? Or, like, well, the thing that chokes me up more is the scene of him on the phone to Mia yes. towards the end. That seems like a scene that Paul Walker shot himself. Like, that doesn't seem like a um. CGI, a or, deep fake, yeah, a deep CGI, fake. CGI deep fake version of him, which makes everything like even in that scene, I was getting choked up with him mm. and Mia talking because it's like I'd love to know if they shot the Mia stuff after Paul's passing because mm. you can tell it's hard for her going through that. I was about to say you can tell it's hard, like she's acting really, really well, or it's just like she's using what she's got. You yeah, know? yeah, she's making it it, it work for her. Um. Right, so let's get into talking about the family, of course, for this film. We'll talk about we already kind of covered it, so we can don't really need to say much. But of course, this film sees us lose Brian from the the, the franchise slash family, unless they do some fucked up CGI shit in the future, which no. I don't really want them to. No, I think they're definitely I doubt not. They would do never that. again. Even even this movie, th- what this movie did, and I understand the parameters they were working within because of it and they weren't prepared to do it, this movie even, like, some of the CG is, like, very noticeable at times, or... I don't think so. I think this movie has the best use of that CGI technique. No. Nah. More so than Marvel. There's, like, some shots nah. that aren't great. Like, the There's shot just... where they're looking over Los Angeles, like, all the, the whole group together. Yeah. But I still say, overall, like, but compare this to... Like, like, I still think this looks better than Tarkin and Leia no. and any of that stuff. No way. Yeah. Looks better than Leia. Doesn't look better than Tarkin. The problem is, and I think it might be just because it, the problem for me might just be because of his, because of how long and how important this character is to this movie, the amount of shots where they obviously are using either the back of his head or like there was a lot of him like picking up Jack and like moving it across his face like perfectly in time as the shot looked to hide his face and just show his him. There was a lot mm. of those that it was like, oh, okay, I can see you're trying to get around this so you can't, because you mm. can't deep fake yeah. and CGI everything. That'd be insane. Yeah. Um, it was, I think if I didn't have such a connection to this, I'd find it harder to be passable of that CGI. Mm. It just might be my hot take of this movie, but it's just, yeah. I, I will say, like, as much as I'm like, I hope they don't do any CGI shit for him. The one asterisk I have on that is potentially one shot for the tenth and final film. Like if they if they want to do shoot like a, something that shows him living happily with Mia or some shit, like as the like the in the rounding moments of ten, where it's showing all of our characters and what they're doing before it rolls the credits, I actually think I would be okay with one moment like that. I think that's all I would be okay with personally. And I think that's that's fine because it's like showing all the characters and where they're at. That's the only time I would, I would allow it. Would you be okay with that? Or would you be like, no? I'd have to see it before. I'd be, yeah, yeah, it would. Yeah, but in concept, are you like that's? Yeah, that seems okay? fine. I mean, yeah, I mean they could just reuse like some sort of footage they didn't use. Yeah, previous yeah. or something like that. Yeah, because I just feel like if tenth is the final one, like it would be fitting to see. That's I if feel, he survives like till 10. Yeah, it, oh, God. It'll be interesting to see how they handle it with Mia in the in number nine. New one. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Like, her, like uh, are they just going to have... I, has Jacob to be just be kills a phone conversation, right? Brian off screen. No, fuck off. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like it just has to be a phone conversation. And, like, they could have a shot of, like, you could hear, like, the kids playing in the background. The camera could be facing her. 
And you could like, she turns to camera like she's talking to like Brian off screen kind of thing. And she could be like, I've got to handle this. Are you okay with it? And then like, it just cuts. Like you don't need to hear him say anything, but like having her talk to him, but us not seeing him, I think is the, like they could get away with a quick scene like that of her being like, it's my brother. It's family. I've got to, this is for me. This isn't, this isn't for it you. It feels, it Brian. does feel, the problem with that is it feels very weird of Brian just letting her do it by herself. Yeah, I mean, Cause, cause, yes you and know, no. The whole movie is it, Brian is part of that family. Brian, yes is, and no. But it's like if someone's going to stay there with the kid, like maybe it, like maybe for once, maybe it's like him being, like, you know, he what? has a broken. I leg. did the last one. Yeah, well, I mean, he did. He did seven. You know, she stayed at home. She she's on the, the phone. Kid. She's like, I'm so sorry. We took that trip to the Alps and you broke your leg. Hey, Dom, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe. Um. So our one new addition to the family in this film, though, is Ramsey, um, who I guess when you first meet in the movie, you don't really think that she's going to end up being part of the family. But I mean, and, and maybe even by the end of it, Karen's like, but is she? But, and the answer to that is yes, because she is part of the group come eight. So I can confirm she is actually part of the family and introduced in this film. So she's how, also how in the trailer for nine. So I guess that's kind of... Yeah, she's also in the trailer yeah, for exactly. nine. Yeah, so I don't know if you saw her or not, um, <laughs> <laughs> um so how do, how do we feel about Ramsey as a character and like her and her how she works within the group especially as like kind of Tej's um partner I guess I mean she adds a new if- dynamic to the group like she's not like anybody else kind of you know she's got the is she though she's a lot like Tej yeah but better <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah, and but also no, because Tej. But also, I think it's not worth comparing her to the male counterparts and yeah. being like they're adding like like a fe- like you got to remember up until this point, there's like two, there's there's two main girls that kind of come and go. One of which they fridged for like a movie or two, and then also um, the other one they the other one's like I'm too. I'm on baby duty, and then another one's like oh I slept with Dom for an episode, and now I'm off because you're dead girlfriends. But like the women don't exactly get the best end no, of the, the stick. So don't. introducing another strong uh, female character that's also not just like the other ones were like. Uh, Old Dom's girlfriends, of course, be uh, be that um, what's her name? Fuck, uh, Elsa, Elsie? No, what? Elsa what's the what's the police? Um, what's it? Oh, I'm forgetting what the fucking character's name is. The police officer, anyway. Um, her and of Elena. course, oh, Elena. That's yeah, a, so it's like you, you know, like she's that, strong, that kick-ass police officer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that we couldn't remember her name. Yeah. You know, it's like strong, kick-ass police officer, and then Letty is also like the kick-ass kind of. Characters were well. and Ramsey is tech chick, but also hot tech chick. So not like nerdy girl with glasses, hot. But they they could have gone the hot with glasses nerdy girl route, but they were just went for no. Like she's just who she is, but tech chick. Yeah. I Before we move me, I on think... quickly, I just want to mention, seeing as we brought up Elena, there was that moment with her and Tom. It's like interesting that they had that moment in the hospital. Like, mm-hmm. I know it, like, obviously she knows something that we as people who've watched eight know. And then. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're, you're doing, yeah. um, fan reading, which also I will note that without spoiling it for Kieran, that I hadn't, I hadn't watched this movie since eight came out and it, I rewatching yes. this had a similar thought where I was like, did they do that on purpose or am I just reading into that? Because yeah. that's what I do. But if you had the same thought, then I'm like, fuck, it, it, it does play. Like, it does play quite well that play, she's yeah. like, she seems like she has something to say, but she doesn't say it. Yeah. I mean, the anyway, timing. Karen, strap in for next week. I don't know how any of the timing it does. Works, it, does it. it does work out. It does. I thought about it, and it does. Anyway, Karen, wait, wait until next episode, and you'll find yeah, out what we're talking yeah. about. <laughs> yeah, indeed. indeed. It's fine. Yep. The surprise yep, is coming. She's a robot. <laughs> <laughs> I will say uh, back is, on Ramsey just Ramsey. quickly that I, I think I need to see her in eight to understand her better and to know her better because in this movie she is a little bit damsel in distress when they first meet her. Oh, 100% when they first meet her. She but. doesn't fill out that well all throughout or she doesn't get the opportunity to. So I think seeing her in the next movie and giving her the more opportunity there um, – will probably change, like help me understand her role and everything. Yeah. I think as much as like I have problems with eight for specific things we'll talk about, 
and I've been teasing throughout this entire podcast. Um, so you do get a better idea of like her being part of the group in eight, of course, because by especially by the time eight runs around, the you know it's it's some time. Like I would say, I don't, I don't think they give an actual thing, but it, it seems like it could have been like a year, two years, honestly, since this one, and she feels a lot more like homey with the group and also especially like Tej in that movie. Like they're like we're, we're, we're down, you know, to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how that works. Um, also, I want to give out, although he's not part of the family, but, you know, family adjacent kind of thing. I want to give a shout out to Hector for being in the movie for top, for 10 seconds. We haven't seen him since the first film. Everyone, uh, that was a cool, it's not really a cameo, but cool the, character that could see come back for a Hector seconds. in every movie he's ever been in? Hector. Yeah. That yeah. guy. That guy. He's pretty great. Shows back up as Hector. And then also adjacent family, um, Mr. Nobody, because... He's not part of the family, although he becomes part of the franchise. I guess is the word I'd put him under. Like he yeah. does, turn, he's in this one, and then he shows. He's he's also in number eight, and then also the whole idea of his secret organization becomes very pr- relevant for the franchise going forward. Uh, because even though I haven't watched that animated kid show, in that one of the characters is like Mrs. Nobody or some shit. So it's like it, his whole organization is important for the franchise going forward. Um, I. En- I like Kurt Russell as an actor, so I all enjoy anything that he's in. He I enjoy him like in this role. He seems like yeah. he's just having fun. Yeah, like he's I like, like it. you can almost exude him being like, "Yes, finally, uh, a, a role that I can just have fun with. It's not a serious active role, and I don't have to worry about it like I worried about Tron Legacy." And yeah. then he carries on with his life. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I mean, Ashley's face. I think you're thinking of the what? wrong actor for Tron. Like, isn't it? No, Kurt Russell's in Tron Legacy. Who do you think it is? Isn't Jeff Kurt Bridges. his dad? I was like, who do you? Who? No, Jeff Bridges. It is Jeff Bridges. It's Jeff Bridges. I yeah. fuck. Okay. Yeah, it's Jeff Bridges in Tron Legacy. Don't worry. Never mind, everyone. Ashley just dominated me with his <laughs> what do you, what do you, what do you want to watch My attitude. Knowledge. Yep. I didn't like his face. It was scaring me. It was like something went wrong with the audio or something. Like, <laughs> it's like, this doesn't make sense. Doesn't oh. sound right. Um, yeah, so the, how do we feel about uh, um, Mr. Mo- Nobody, though? And like that that general idea of this secret organization stuff being introduced to Fast and Furious. I think it's like, the, of course, the franchise is already silly at this point. It's no more silly than it already is. I'm like, whatever. I enjoy it. It's fun. I mean, it's just it's an fine. easy justifier for why they keep coming back together and keep, why they get all these equipment. Like, it, it, it allows them to do even crazier things like drive cars out of an airplane. Yeah. So, it, yeah, if you want to <laughs> want to break down, like, the key action scenes of this movie a, l- a little bit quickly because I think this film has obviously some of the craziest up to this point. Um, I love the car. I love the cars out of the uh, airplane thing. And once again, I'd like to point out, like I talked about episodes and episodes ago, that I love how they shot some of it practically, so it doesn't look terrible. Like, it looks kind of cool. Um, it's silly, but also sci-fi enough that you're like, could that, like, work? You know, like, I feel like it rides a line where you're like, but, like, it is silly, but at the same time, yeah, like, maybe. Like, you, you, you kind of buy into it sort of thing. And I love the scene before that, around the table, with... Um, Roman's the one who's like, I got the plan. I got to start making plans, guys. I got to take control of my life. What are we going to do? <laughs> yeah. We're going to drop there. And then, well, how do we get there? Tej, I'm delegating tasks. Well, I've got no idea for that. And then how Roman doesn't get out and they shoot him out. I love it. I think it's funny. And then, of course, uh, the most bullshit crazy of this movie, the car jumping between the, the buildings scene, which once again, i got to be honest, absolutely nuts, unrealistic, <laughs> the... Would not it's not realistic at all. You sure? However, yeah, no, you you'd go out that window, you would not that's not how it works. The car would explode if it hit the other side. It's not gonna just perfectly <laughs> land on the I mean the it, it just going. depends if you hit um, the window instead of like an actual floor. I'm sure they'd be fine. There's like a one percent chance of this happening. I which don't is know. why I am able to watch it and go they get very lucky. <laughs> no, just Dom knows he's a is like a mathematician. He knows how much speed he needs to get to hit the right spots. Can I also say while we're talking about this scene, 
Ronda Rousey is terrible. Ronda, like, I Ronda can't Rousey believe they got Ronda Rousey to job to Michelle Rodriguez. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's fine when she's doing the punching. It's that one or two line she has where I'm like, please just yep. stop like, talking. Thank God you're thank, here. Oh my God, thank sucks. God you stayed up. I was getting so bored. Oh, like, that oh. line was like cringing bad. It was <laughs> just so bad. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan. Um, and also re-watching this movie since Ronda Rousey has proven to be a transphobe and whatever else over the last couple of years since this movie's comes out. And I'm like, just fucking die, bitch. Like, <laughs> just Whoa. Fucking Michelle Rodriguez, beat the shit, beat the shit out of her, <laughs> Michelle Rodriguez. Come on, just do it. Fucking get out of here. Um... So that's, and also, since we talked about it briefly weeks ago when we're talking about Gina Carano versus Ronda Rousey, 100% Gina Carano, bad actor, better, better fighter. Yeah. Her fight oh, scene with Michelle Rod- Rodriguez was better. also better, I think. It was way, way better. Yeah. At least she was so. a fully formed character with a plot. Ronda yes. Rousey was yeah, like, she showed up for like five minutes. Goon in background. Yeah. Random female goon, head of other female goons. Yep. 100%. But talking about fight scenes, I want to give a shout out to Tony Jaa in this movie. Yes. His first uh, big sort of Hollywood movie. Um, of course, if you don't know, I'm a big fan of certain, uh, I'm a big Hong martial Dark. arts <laughs> fan movie. He's, and Tony Jaa is one of my guys. And I, it's really fun to he's see him in this movie. He's the guy from The Raid, right? Mm. No? Mm-mm. Okay. He's in all, he's in Ong Bak, uh, all the Ong Baks and those, I mean, that's his pop, most popular, I think. The Ong Bak trilogy is probably his most famous mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, for it. But he's like a really popular, like one of those dudes that does, you watch some of his films and he does like black backflips over shit and whatever else. You're yes. like, how, how are you not dead? Like, you know, like, because they film all these movies in Thailand and shit where they're like, yeah, how do they just, legally allow you to do this shit? Like, it's, it's where these places <laughs> where it's more expensive to buy a crash pad than it is just to take you to the hospital after you've done Pretty much. Like yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. So, uh, I'm a big fan of a lot of stuff he does. So I remember watching when they announced he was going to be in this. I was like, oh, this is great. And seeing him and Paul Walker have fight scenes together was like really great. Cause I'm like, oh, Paul Walker, like one of my favorite action stars growing up. And then, um, you know, one of my current like kind of martial arts fans. It made so. me, it makes me laugh every time just when he's in his death scene when Paul Walker's just like not fast enough or too slow or whatever. It's yeah, just funny. like, it's just too like, slow. Yep. Too slow. <laughs> yeah. It's just nice it's callback. Just, too slow. Yeah. It's, it almost right. feels like that Too Fast, Too Furious, Brian, was like just comes mm-hmm. back for that second and you're like... Yeah. Creeps out a little bit. Yeah. No, you, you enjoy it creeping out a little bit, yeah. Yeah, both those fights, were um, awesome. especially uh, like on the bus, like that was cool. On the, yeah, the bus thing is fucking... I mean, I, I think that's honestly the most unrealistic his, part of the whole movie when he grabs his, onto the fucking spoiler. <laughs> just him lying on the floor in his like fourth or fifth conversation with Letty... Where he's just like, you know, thank you. Like, it's just, just so like, there's no quips. There's no. He's like, oh, thanks. I thanks. didn't die. <laughs> thanks. I'm good. I'm good. Let's go. Get in the car. Off we go. Yeah, it's it's quite funny. Um, I do want to bring up action scenes though, in general, like from a directing point of view for this one, because it's one thing I've always noticed about this movie is that, especially after you get used to how Justin Lin shoots things, I think that James Wan's style is highly visible from the moment you start this movie, particularly when you have the opening fight scene between Jason Statham and The Rock, and James Wan does, like, one of his signature camera moves, which is that when the two of them, like, flip over backwards, the camera does, like, a 180 turn in the air and, like, kind of crashes when, uh, down to the ground with them. When Ro- The Rock does The Rock Bottom. Is that what you're talking this about? This is the yes. rock bottom, and I'm like, I popped. I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, <laughs> do the just people's do the elbow. Rock bottom? I was like, is he going to elbow him? This is so cool. <laughs> when he does that wrestling nerdy shit, um, <laughs> yeah, the, the, camera fl- <laughs> the camera flips over f- for him, and like that's very evident of James Wan's style. And overall, this movie has a highly different directing style to the past ones, and I think, I think it stands out quite a lot. Um, not, but I think it's good. Like I think James Wan directs a good Fast and Furious movie. I think also like um, I think he gets the fine line between silly and Fun. like making it believable. Yeah. Like he, he, yeah, he gets it. I think, and that's the reason. Like I think he's going to have success between doing his sort of smaller budget horror movies, which he's proven to be quite good at, and now he started exploring action movies, and this was obviously his first foray, and then he's done Aquaman and whatever else. I think he's proven that he's able to to do action quite well. Um, I really enjoy it. Does anyone else, like, think he's bad, good? 
you know, does anyone even not notice? Do you, do you, do you notice this, Karen, or are you like, well, um, no, I do notice the stylized choice of it and the difference is there. It's not something, I guess I'm just not aware enough to go, oh, this is a directional choice or this is his kind of style. It's just, I like it. And I'm like, cool, that's a nice cut. That's a nice uh, use of the camera. Um, it's not something that I, I guess because I'm more of a narrative person where I, I look at what the writers are doing and how the writers are investing their time in the movies rather than the actual um, camera focus of it. Yeah, well, fair enough. Okay. I mean, I, I'm pretty much bringing this up because I'm going to, like, not to spoil next week, but I'm going to say that <laughs> next week. <laughs> I, I mean, look, I, I enjoy watching 8 as a Fast and Furious movie, but I have a lot of complaints about it. And one of my complaints is that I don't think the director of that movie, F. Gary, Gay, uh, Gary Gray, has the directorial chops for Fast and Furious where he can yeah. ride the line. And I think we'll, we'll talk about that more next week. So I just want to bring up that the last two directors of this franchise have managed to ride that line quite well. And. We'll see an example of when it doesn't work next week. Um, all right, so let's get um, any last things, Ash. Things. I mean, it gets about, quite a bonkers see? crazy. The last action sequence with the drone. It might I, like. I think it might go on a little bit too long. Is there anything like they're chasing them down? Like they, I feel like they could have condensed I, a little bit. Honestly, it felt like it was shorter watching it this time than I remember it being. It's been like a couple of years, I think, since I watched yeah. it. So it felt shorter. And it, it's awfully convenient to walk the rock just walks to several different places at exactly the right time. Hey, oh, one of the I times gotta, he drives gotta, an ambulance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got to give a shout out. To, this isn't like my favorite line or whatever else, but so I got to give a shout out to it. Not, not to say if I'm stealing someone's, I'm sorry, but the part where he literally like looks out, sees stuff exploding, he looks down at his arm and just like flex breaks it and goes, don't you oh, just go to work. <laughs> it was so good. Every time I'm like, how does the rock come back into this? And then I, as it starts, I'm like, "Oh yeah, he breaks the cast by flexing." I just, but also, but also the fact that he sees exploding, and he's not like, "What's that?" He just goes, "Toretto." <laughs> yeah, he knows what's going on. <laughs> it's so silly, but it's so good at the same time. I love it. Um, yeah, and Kieran, you got nothing else you want to mention? No, I'm good. I'm pretty good. Cool. Let's move into favorite line. Uh, I went for. Let's say Ash goes first this week. What is your no, actually, no, you did with Kieran. What is your favorite line? Yeah. Fuck you. I think I'm trying, I'm trying to change it around. This could be what I think is the dumbest line of all of the Fast and Furious movies. Like, that's I think a, that's I a honestly hot take. think it's the dumbest line. And it made me laugh out loud because I forgot it was a thing. But it's Dom Toretto saying the thing about street fights, the street always wins. <laughs> when he, <laughs> and then he does the like fucking smack <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and then he like stops the ground. And, like, it cl- it's enough force to break the rest of his. It's car. not the. <laughs> it's not a street. It's, it's a car park. So <laughs> also, it's I want to point out the fact that you literally see that like fucking Dekacho get crumbled under like ten foot of fucking cement. But they love. They make sure they get one shot where you can see his head's like not crushed or anything. But I'm like, <laughs> that dude's bones are all broken, right? But now nah, it's fine. Like, <laughs> no, it's fine. He can fine. walk to his prison cell at the end of the movie. Yeah, you can walk to his prison <laughs> cell. It's fine. It survives. Um, Ash, what's your favorite line? Uh, I think I think it, I might be stealing yours as well, but I used to say I lived my life a quarter mile at a time, and I think that's why we were brothers, because you did too. No matter where you are, whether it's a quarter mile away or halfway across the world, you'll always be with me, and you'll always be my brother. <laughs> it was like he was, he was always watching the end of the movie again. <laughs> um, that is my one also i'm gonna say and i'm glad you said it because i it was the thing i think i was gonna struggle to say about crying so it's fine because <laughs> <laughs> as i literally as before we started recording i fucking typed it up into my notes on my um, phone here and as i was typing it i started crying i'm like oh god <laughs> <laughs> i think you should say it I, no i can't it's horrible i got, I got two more it. You can't tell someone they love you. That that I, I, they were married the whole time. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's your what's your? Yeah, and then uh, Ramsey's speech. Uh, I know enough. Ex- looking at Brian, ex cop, military, something like that. The way you look at those guys shows training. Tech guy offended by the hacker remark. Naturally, Alpha, Miss Alpha, Joker, and then Roman's like wrong. 
double alpha. Double <laughs> alpha. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What? <laughs> See, what can't be a double down? alpha? The disrespect around here is real. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, even though I'm like, oh my god, so if somebody wrote this, fucking The Rock yelling at Ramsey being like, woman, I am the cavalry. It's <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> <laughs> so fucking hell. <laughs> I was like, oh god. The one thing I just thought of all that, that I want to give a quick shout out that I forgot to mention, that is worth mentioning, is that that's, this film does build on Letty and Dom's whole... Um, her being a new person, whatever else. Now, I think that is interesting in this film. I think that plot line gets overshadowed by a lot of other things, and that's yeah. why it's easy to forget. However, I do I do like the way they handle it in this and the fact that she like calls out like Mrs. Alpha and then it's like, oh, I can't remember if it's like Tej or whoever Roman like says they're not married though. But then of course by the time you get to the end of the movie, it's revealed that they did get married at some point, and that's the 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 whole thing when it comes back to it. So I I, I think that's nice. It just kind of gets overshadowed, yeah. Um, all right, so File segment, of course. We're picking two songs from each movie for the Ultimate Fast and Furious mix. Find it on Spotify. The link is in the description down below. Two songs each. Um, go Ash first. What do you got for me? Um, let's see. Oof. I'm going to go with I Will Return by Skylar Grey. And uh, Turn Down for What by DJ Snake. Sure. You a big fan? Turn down for what? Do you get yeah. hot? I like to turn down for what? <laughs> <laughs> what are you turning down for? What? That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, what do you what do you what do you uh, all right, if I shouldn't go for it, I'm gonna go for the fucking easy one here. See you again, Wiz Khalifa Charlie Pooth, because you know, it's a heart wrenching song. It's that piano line does things to a man. Da, 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 um, da, da, da. And the planet also, at the Kobe I Memorial will... or whatever like did they? Yeah. Well, not the memorial. Really? Like, he's the first Lakers game after his death. So. Oh, okay. I did not know that. Um, and then I will also pick My Angel by Prince Royce. Well, we actually got a big list here because Ash picked two that weren't on mine and you only picked one. I've, obviously, I picked See You Again. I felt like I, we all three of us would pick See I You mean, Again. I mean, I was a given. Like, I Ash, think it's, uh, I wanted to, like, Ash- broaden. No, you have to. I be, knew you, you would pick that. Be honest. I knew Just you would be honest it. and pick your two favorites. You know that's how it's supposed to work. Um, so I picked C again, and then the other one I picked was GDFR by Flow Rider, Sage the Gemini, Lookers, and Noodles, which are you know great one. Um, that's another one that I, I reckon Ash gets down to on his daily playlist where he plays Turned Down for What and that one straight afterwards. Do, do, um, do, do. <laughs> yeah, he goes. He gets gets absolutely hyped. I think. Anyway, um, looks like we're all out of NOS for this week, everyone. Don't forget, follow us on Twitter by heading to explosionoutwork.com slash Twitter. Next week, we are discussing the film that I've been slowly teasing my problems with, Fate of the Furious. So make sure you watch that before the episode drops next week. Um, it's going to be an interesting time because by the time you're listening to it next week, we are one week out. We're currently two weeks out from the movie when you're listening to this so that's exciting times and that means we're about two weeks away from justice is coming bye thought you could leave without saying goodbye is it though <laughs> 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 <laughs>